You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. What we're trying to establish for everyone, Bill, is 10 to 20 baggers per company. That's what we believe we've set up by opportunity. So three 10 baggers, you know, coming out of one share price is a remarkable event. All the value that we're going to create for shareholders, the 10, 20 bagger kind of that we're trying to generate is going to happen on the back of drilling, which is going to start. All three entities will be getting drilled next year. This is Mining Stock Education, and I'm your host, Bill Powers. Thank you for tuning in again. Well, there's a lot going on in the junior gold sector, and one company we're going to be hearing from today is our sponsor, Orin Resources. They've been on the move, acquiring, doing spin-outs. Back on July 29th, about a month ago, Orin announced the proposed acquisition of East Main Resources, and at the same time that they proposed acquiring East Main, they're going to spin out two of their Peruvian assets into the Sombrero Copper Projects and then the Curry Baya Silver Gold Projects. So there's a lot of moving parts with Orin right now. And one of the prerequisites for the acquisition of East Main was to do a financing, which the company just announced a uh, proposed bought deal financing. So here to give an update on this, as well as all these de developments and moving parts, is the executive chairman, Ivan Bebek. Ivan, welcome back to the show. And could you start off by explaining this recently announced bought deal? There's some confusion or ambiguity, perhaps, around how should you value Orin in light of this financing? Hi, Bill. Thanks. Great to be back. Um, so, yes, it's been busy. Uh, spent a lot of time preparing for this amazing event for shareholders to split Orin into three companies and as you mentioned to acquire a Canadian asset to strengthen our Canadian portfolio and be you know eliminate the seasonality so we can drill year round um, we announced the financing yesterday uh, for about 22 and a half million dollars which fully funds the new company which is called Fury Gold Mines it will fully fund a 50,000 meter drill program which will start in November which is spectacular but the confusion lies within the pricing a lot of people thought we priced this financing at $2 or in Canadian, which we did not. That's entirely false. Um, we are not adding any shares to the Oren registry to do this funding. They're actually being done on the new Fury structure, which is you know, suggested to have 110 million shares out. The financing was for 22.5 million, and we issued a total of 7.5 million shares, which gives the average price of that financing three dollars per share so it's an incredible start in terms of you know being funded for a fifty thousand meter drill program and a year of working capital uh, i think the challenges around that financing for us uh, was no shortage of interest but because it's a sub receipt because it's picking part of the value out of the orange share price and people have to do the math um, I think there was a lot of, or I know there was a lot of reluctance by some very good funds to tie up capital in a sub receipt financing that has a chance because there's a vote involved on the acquisition of East Main to drag out for an extra month or two, which, which obviously we all know it's a very volatile quarter with the election coming up in November. So a lot of really high quality funds could not make it into the financing for their own restrictions or comfort level of the mechanism we could only do which is a sub receipt financing but the people we did get in the financing are some of the best shareholders we could have asked for uh, in terms of long-term you know big growth focused investors of, of real quality and I don't want to name name them right now in this announcement but uh, I'm sure you'll hear about our share structure once that company is trading but uh, came together you know re really well in the end we took less money than we were you know being on offered to take on the bot deal financing because we were not happy with the valuation. Um, we understand the mechanism was confusing. Gold had come down from nearly $2,100 an ounce to nine, low 1900s an ounce during our efforts to do this funding. So in the spirit of being anti-dilutive and wanting to create a tremendous amount of currency or share price movement in fury, we, you know, took the, the tighter or, or, you know, more adequate funding versus over financing at these lower prices. So we think there will be a lot of people that miss this funding that will be able to participate once it's trading. We think the 50,000 meter drill program will be a tremendous catalyst for Fury right out the gate. And, uh, you know, right now we're speculating it starts 
a few weeks after the, the vote, which is, you know, November, the vote is going to be October 5th. And uh, once that gets started with a $2,000 gold backdrop, I mean, there's so much to add in that deposit. Um, you know, I think I think it's it's going to be really exciting for shareholders going forward. If accredited investors want to get in on this deal, is there still open room or are you all closed off? No, it, it closed within an hour of being announced yesterday morning. And, um, you know, we, we announced it around 625 or so, or no, sorry, we closed it uh, 730 yesterday morning, a couple hours after we announced it. And it was fully, fully subscribed and there was orders coming in afterwards. And so, you know, these, if you wanted to participate in these financings, you would have had to have an account at one of the bankers involved, either Beacon or Canaccord. Um, you know, you can still buy Fury Gold Mines by buying East Main shares, which are, you know, ironically trading at financing price, which, which I don't fully understand because now the company's funded. They should see a lift here in the near term. And at the same time, um, if you buy Orin today, you're going to get 0.7 shares of Fury. So you can participate indirectly or directly through the purchase of East Main. Um, and if you follow the deal mechanics that we announced on July 29th, you will see that how your shares will convert into Fury uh, on the back of that. But uh, no, it's all done. It closed quickly. It's a very strong book with, with people that we're very fortunate to have supporting us going forward and, and a very good start to that company. One of the reasons or one of the main reasons I should say for dividing up the company is, is due to your belief that the parts are greater than the current whole. In light of this financing and what it was priced at, how should investors look at the current Orin share price as it's trading today? And how can they decipher the current valuation that the market is giving Sombrero and Curibaya? So it's, it's a good question to ask. And the biggest challenge, and you know, this is a really good problem that we've created for Orin shareholders was how do you weigh the value on, on Sombrero? Do you weigh it on Curry Baya? Do you weigh it on Canadian assets that have alone generated this market cap a couple times for us previously? That's a good problem to have, Bill, because we think Orin itself, based on all three opportunities, is well undervalued and we're not getting value for that. So, you know, lo and behold, we do the, the Spinco. I think that it's unfair to any of those asset classes to assume a value because there's a lot of speculation or opinion on what those things could be worth. You know, we have a very strong opinion at Committee Bay. We've spent $60 million getting closer. And next week, you will see the eight best targets that, that have come out of Committee Bay since we've been there. And they're going to be, you know, a spectacular shot at making a world-class discovery in a, in a $2,000 gold market. The East Main Eau Claire asset, you know, it was trading at 0.1 nav when we came to them to buy them. They were about 10, 11 cents a share, their company. And we were trading at 0.9 nav because obviously we have several assets and a, and a different reputation with management and our share price. But is that a fair valuation of them? Not at all. You know, we think they should be trading at least with industry standard at 0.53. We think as, as we take on their asset, they'll be trading closer to 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And our goal will be to get Fury back to the 0.9 nav. So then you look at, at Sombrero. Sombrero is a, is a rare opportunity in our careers and on the planet to go find the other half of one of the world's biggest copper belts. And our first target, which represents about 5% of the Sombrero property, is an analog to Las Bombas, the 10th largest copper mine on the planet that's producing. And so, you know, that's a really, really spectacular opportunity. And you can measure all the exploration prior. It got a low valuation, you know, when we went to go do the deal just because it doesn't have permits yet. And we're changing that drastically. And not only are we getting the permits we've applied for, we're applying for three other permits to drill three other targets, you know, in the Sombrero district consecutively through all of next year. So, you know, then then you come back to Curibaya and Curibaya is going to have a new name and you'll be the first to hear it. Uh, it's going to be called Tier One Metals. It's a silver focused company that also has precious metal assets or it will be adding project depth, meaning more projects with really high quality gold assets to go with the silver swing that's in that company. Um, the silver alone, I mean, this is some of the highest grade silver sampled in a long time, you know, in this business. It's a series of veins that are outcropping or they're radiating from three dome complexes. Basically, three areas have veins radiating from them, and they're all from one to, to 12 or 14 kilo silver. And I mean, if we find the source of where the silver veins come from, the opportunity would be world-class substantial on high-grade silver. It's a very exciting silver opportunity. However, you know, in, in the spirit of what we just did with Canada, 
if we can add more, and we've been looking at stuff for the last three years in Peru, um, there are a couple things that have met great in terms of really high quality, big, large scale gold swings. And if we can add those in, in the next few months before Korea Bias starts trading as tier one metals, uh, we most certainly will do that. So if you asked me what should our current share price be trading at, I'd say individually, each one of these entities, you know, depending on where you classify value, either off ounces or off speculation, they could they could probably all compete with a, a very robust share price that would be similar to where Oren is today. That's my opinion, but fact would point that all the ounces are in Canada and all the value is in Canada right now. So, you know, I think in the next few months, what everyone's going to see is a lot of daylighting, meaning revealing of new targets, the new drill plan for Sombrero, and it's also going to see additional acquisitions for Curry Bio, which is tier one metals down in, in Peru. And I think that's going to be where the value proposition becomes much stronger than it seems like it is today. And the one thing, Bill, that completely baffles me is, you know, we announced the financing for the Canadian asset for Fury Gold Mines. And I understand that people thought we did a Canadian, you know, or I was trying to or in financing at two dollars Canadian uh, legally, we cannot do that much of a discount to market. But no, we never did that. We did it for Fury Gold Mines, and then there was a sell-off. And you know, I, I mean, you get three shares for every orange share you buy today. You're going to have a world-class silver gold portfolio in Tier One Metals. You're going to have a world-class copper gold district you know in in sombrero. That's and both of those things will be drillable in Q1. And then you have Fury Gold Mines. You know, we we hired or met a CEO that was working at Agnico Eagle, and he basically came from joined Agnico when they were build, building their first mine. Once that was done, he was on the Corp Dev team to go and acquire and put nine mines into production, which was the most incredible playbook that we've seen in our in our industry in, in a period of about a decade and a half when that took place. Um, Fury Gold Mines is, in my opinion largely undervalued, largely understated. It's going to be tough to get value until it trades by its own symbol. And I think that shareholders get a 50,000 meter drill program, which is the largest one that I've been part of, you know, on, on one asset in my career to date, starting in November, provided the vote goes ahead. On Sombrero, the permits are long overdue. Um, they are, we've had some really good advancements, which everybody will hear about very soon. And, you know, getting four different targets that we can drill versus the one that everyone's been waiting for. And I don't know which is the best one yet to get all of those drillable and resume trading or relisting sometime in, in 2021, early Q1 or mid Q1 would be will be spectacular for shareholders. Ivan, I had a conversation with somebody that uh, about Orin Resources, and they said, Bill, I'm most interested in Sombrero. I'm just going to wait until it relists and then buy my shares then. My advice to the person was, well, I think your cheapest option of picking up Sombrero is to buy it before the record date. So if you were speaking to this person, what would you say and what possibly what possible value creators might occur between now, between the record date and when Sombrero relists? So the record date would be October 9th, just so we're clear on the date. If you buy shares in Oren before October 9th, you'll be entitled to all the shares that were the three shares that are coming. Um, secondly, in terms of Sombrero and Curry Baya, and we just financed Fury Gold Mines for a year with a big drill program. Both Sombrero and Curry Baya have enough money on the treasury that stays with Oren to complete all of their targeting and to do a couple of things I'm going to talk about here, either make acquisitions or bring more targets into that permitting envelope that I've mentioned. Um, they will have one year of working capital going into Q1. So they're in, they're in not strong financial positions with drill money in hand, but they're in very adequate you know, financial positions to take their time to pick the best investors. On Sombrero, if you want to buy Sombrero and you want to be part of it, if you're waiting for it to come back trading, our goal, you know, because Sombrero's had so much corporate interest from around the globe, some of the largest companies in the world have approached us, our goal, if we can, would be to bring in a strategic investor while it's unlisted and come back with a, a big treasury with, with a strategic strategic investor in the company, provided we can negotiate a share price that works for us and them, and to have a couple years of drilling capital in the company. So you would be waiting to buy Sombrero 
after the company's financed should we get a strategic investor at, at a very good price. That, that is the preferred route. As a shareholder of Orin, um, I'm, I'm leaning towards that as much as possible because of the third party validation that's been so strong. Uh, I think there's some good partners out there that could help us drive this project forward on a much bigger scale. And that's what we're going to go towards doing. If you really like the really high grade silver opportunity that we're going to learn a lot more about in the next few months, you know, again, you know, we would look to do probably a rights offering, but we're not going to fund tier one metals, which will have the Cray buy asset until we finish adding a considerable amount of portfolio depth to that portfolio in this market environment. So, you know, some people say private companies are very difficult to finance, not in the event of our Peruvian assets, the demand when we went out to raise money for Fury, there was a lot of interest to fund these ones as well. There'll be a tremendous amount of demand. And what's happened in this industry, Bill, as you've seen, there isn't a lot of large scale, you know, big exploration shots in copper, gold or silver in the marketplace. It's just not there because people weren't looking for it. And, and I like to think the thing that we're most proud of, of what we've done for shareholders, besides about to split the company into three shares, is identifying some of the best opportunities. And, and there's no guarantee we're going to make these discoveries, but some of the best opportunities in the world for silver, copper, and gold discoveries. And so I, I think that you know what largely gets missed or ignored is the four and a half years, the hundred million we spent preparing this portfolio to divide and provide these kind of opportunities. And if you're waiting, you know, there, there may be very difficult to get shares with drill permits in hand. Speculation is going to be very strong. And, you know, that's that's when these things come back in Q1. So I wouldn't wait if I was an investor. I would buy my shares prior and I would get the three shares for one. If you like one over the other two, I would say that two free shares, one being, you know, a Canadian high-grade gold company starting a 50,000-meter gold drill program, whether you like Canada high-grade gold or not, that company should do extremely well in this gold environment, and it would be a really, really good dividend to, to have in addition to your preferred sombrero share that you keep. If you don't if you don't like the silver and it's not your cup of tea either and, and you just want to buy a sombrero and you're a base metal investor, same idea. You know, you, you, These are shares that you don't pay for really in the transaction, and they're all going to do extremely well out the gate. And we obviously will be subject to drill results, but what we're trying to establish for everyone, Bill, is 10 to 20 baggers per company. And that's what we believe we've set up by opportunity. So three 10 baggers, you know, coming out of one share price is a remarkable event. And if we are partially right or, you know, very right, we're in a $2,000 gold market, Silver is a twenty-eight dollars an ounce, uh, a pound. Sorry, sorry, an ounce. And uh, and copper is trading at three hundred eight or three ten per pound. All three metals that we're talking about have taken off, and this is just the start. I mean, you saw, and I saw. We saw Warren Buffett buy into Bear Gold, and now I'm speaking to all the generalists out there. Well, he he's done something interesting as well. A few days ago, I believe it was yesterday or the day before. He bought into Japanese trading companies, some who we are familiar with because of our interaction with them and the land they've staked around Sombrero, Aituchu and uh, Sombrero, oh, sorry, Sumitomo. Both of these entities, major Japanese trading companies, have been acquiring land. We've had conversations about Sombrero with them, and Warren Buffett's put $6 billion into them and a few other Japanese trading houses. I think we're just seeing the start of this commodity bull market. $2,000 gold is exciting by people who've been in the gold market previously. But to me, if I go back to 2011, this is the same as about $1,500 gold inflation adjusted or so. And I think $2,400, $2,500 gold is the new all-time high inflation adjusted that we got to look for, maybe a bit higher, that we got to look forward to of where this market's really going to ignite. So I think the opportunity here, you're looking at an early early inning, you know, early enough that I can quantify that with Warren Buffett writing checks into this sector, you know, both base and precious metals. Um, you're looking at it in terms of Orin, all the value that we're going to create for shareholders, the 10, 20 bagger kind of that we're trying to generate is going to happen on the back of drilling, which is going to start all three entities will be getting drilled next year. And then the last point I'll make, and I know you were talking with me on offline before this was, how long till your Spinkos come back trading? 
You know, pe- people don't want to hold private companies in a bull market. I- I'm a large, very large shareholder of Warren, and I feel the exact same way. And I want to go drill and, and see that remuneration, you know, in the share price. Well, number one is we're not going to drill until we're back public. Number two is they don't necessarily both have to come back the same day. But if one of them came back in January and the other one came back in February or March, I mean, these are the timelines we're working towards. Both Peruvian companies are going to be fully reporting issuers. They're going to have U.S. filed registration statements. They are able to be held in your 401k or your RSP or your TFSA. And so going forward, there's no restrictions there. You're going to be able to hold all three. And we, we actually have the grace period of about till the end of next year. That's the way we've set this up. But we, we're planning, you know, early Q1 to get these things back trading because we think we'll have permits in hand on both of them at that time. And we'll be able to hit the ground running hard. And as you know, that's a very good time in the market to come back with uh, with a strong share price. On Sobrero, I'm hoping it turns out uh, what we expect it to be uh, based on the two years that we've been talking about. And I know many people are anxious for the drills to poke be beyond the surface and see what's there. You've spoken previously about how you think 100 drill holes or less possibly Sombrero could be gone. Once the majors see this, there could be a bidding war. Can you speak about how long would that take in timeline, assuming you're financed and assuming you have all your permits? Are we talking 18 months after relisting to where we could get these 100 drill holes in the ground? So uh, great question. And the longer, the better. First answer, because it means we're going to find more in that in that type of setting. And we're we're not going to drag it out too far. I mean, we won't have a choice if we drill the right holes. Right. So what I think happens um, to my point earlier we're adding three different targets into the drill plan. And when I say target, each individual target could be a major mine. And so being able to drill four of them, you know, in the next 12 months of, of being public in 2021 through that year, that would show the majors ourselves how many of these, we call them clusters, are actually mineralized with grade and it would be substantial. I think with Sombrero, once the first drill hole hits, the strategy is gonna be, you know, try to be as aggressive as we can to show as many of these targets before we get into those discussions. I would hate to drill some huge holes in the first target and have M&A discussions, you know, a month later because we would miss so much value. So the, the perfect timeline for Sombrero is about 12 to 18 months before we get to that that kind of benchmark. And, and I know a lot of professionals in the industry are listening to this and saying, oh, no way, you're going to drill this for years and everything else. Well, you know, I don't know, 14 major mining companies, uh, some who've, you know, verbally felt us out if we would transact now with Orin to get Sombrero. You know, this, the, the competitive interest from the majors has been mind-blowing just of how it's come to us. And, you know, we, we have, you know, preferred routes to go there. But we're going to be very strategic. We are a very strategic group. We've been very patient, so have our shareholders, to get to this point. And we're going to drive that forward with a very, very succinct plan on establishing and revealing as much value as we can before we hand this over. And the reason why we're going to push for so much value, Bill, is because no matter when we sell it, one year, two years later, there's going to be so much more. This is a multi-generational discovery belt. It's 130,000 hectares where there could be five, six, seven major mines found. I mean, we're in the first 5% of that land position and it's being recognized by all these major mining companies. This is the kind of thing as a major that fits the mold really well because you have decades of discoveries and possible copper supply and, and possible major gold discoveries as well. It has both opportunities to come. So I think by virtue of what we've done is we put together something substantial. It was a theory that a major mining belt continued. And, you know, that theory, if it starts getting proven, it's going to be a, an effort to hold on to it early. I'll switch over to the silver for a minute at tier one metals. If we start drilling five to 10 kilos silver over five or 10 meters on the necks of these three domes, we will compete with one of the biggest silver discoveries in the last 20 years in terms of richness, in terms of grade, if that grade continues. And the targets are, are, are quite substantial. And, you know, there's going to be a lot more on that here in the coming months. But you know, if you look at the PE multiples of Pan American silver, 
uh, incredible company. It trades at almost double the PE ratio of a major gold company. And I think that's something that people have to realize when we talk silver. It is the best performing equity on a discovery of any metal. That's how the name came together, Tier 1 Metals. You go up to gold in Canada. You know, our goal isn't to make a discovery and sell it. It's to build another major mining company. And our platform, our team, our plan that's coming together is substantial. There'll be more acquisitions. The company is going to be aggressive. It's going to pour gold within four years, you know, 2025. I'm, I'm assuming we're at the end of this year. The company gets formed, you know, in a few months here. It's going to start pouring gold. It's going to build a major development pipeline, you know, obviously through organic exploration, some acquisitions that will come in. It will build the majors pipeline for growth before it merges or acquires an operating or producing asset because that's where the currency gets created for major mining companies is through their growth profile. We're going to build that first. And why is that so opportunistic on the Canadian gold company? Because the biggest challenge this industry is going to face is going to be growth. There's a production cliff coming. There have not been huge discoveries. The time to get these discoveries or existing mines into production versus the, the, the demand that's coming in, the new market that we're going into, Warren Buffett investing into gold companies, it's going to be outstanding what happens. And everyone's excited about commodity prices going up. We spent over $100 million trying to find you know, major mines, gold, copper, silver, in the last four years. It's not easy. It's much harder than it was in the last cycle. And a lot less people doing it with, with the proper qualifications to go do it, whether it's raising capital or having the technical team personnel. There is some luck out there, and the mining business does, does rely on luck a lot. And some people are going to make some probably some big discoveries by, by accident. And, and that's, that's awesome. We, we want to see that because it will do really well for a lot of share prices. We're trying to improve our luck considerably with the time, the, the quality of opportunities we're bringing in, and the, and the technical team that we have behind us, which are all former Newmont global experts. We brought them all to get the best assets we could to generate the most luck we could. And sadistically, and I have to say this, you know, I'm glad we haven't made our discovery yet because we would not have been paid for it in the last three years the way we're going to get paid for it should we make one now, right? So I think that everything that I've dreamed about as an orange shareholder from the beginning, it came true. It, it came true a bit better than I thought. I didn't think we would get to three spin codes. At one point, we thought two. But the strength of, of each individual asset class is grown considerably. And I think going forward, you know, the, you know, the book would be written – if, if all three ended up being 10 baggers or 20 baggers, and, and that's what we're bringing to the table by opportunity is to deliver that kind of return. So a lot of news, Bill, we've been quiet. We've been doing deal explaining, explaining on the complexities of the spin codes. I apologize for people that have had trouble, you know, wrestling with value and pricing because it's been frustrating. Trust me, I've done more of it than, than anyone has with lawyers and accountants and whatnot. But this is the price we had to pay as shareholders, as executives, to deliver, you know, these spin codes, these three opportunities that are going to be extremely well capitalized going into the best resource market that we will see in our careers. Ivan, my last question for you, if you could just briefly address um, your role in these companies, not specifically, but I guess my question is getting at, are you spreading yourself too thin or are you actually multiplying yourself? How will your efforts be amplified for the sake of people who buy Orin today and consequently the three companies that they're going to get? So I've been very successful with my role in Orin, you know, creating the share price, going after these assets and contributing to the culture that, that drives us forward. But my success has been a massive credit to the people around me. Michael Henriksen, our, our, our chief geologist, Dave Smithson, our VP of exploration. These two guys are, are really my key, our key as a group to getting into these major assets. You don't hear much from Dave Smithson, but he's, he's a legend in our group and he, and he drives things on the project basis down in South America all the time. Um, Mike Timmons being added for Canada as the CEO. Um, here's a guy that has, and you'll hear it soon because you'll be interviewing him soon. He has, he has parallel energy. He has that fierce attitude to deliver for shareholders. And he has the pedigree and experience to go not only build mines, 
but the playbook to go out and build a major mining company. So the first company that's been created, I am the chair of Fury Gold Mines, means not an executive chairman. I'm there as, you know, much as I'm needed to be, but I'll be honest, I won't need to be around much with what Mike's doing. I'm going to be there in support, but Mike's going to be a superstar in my opinion. I think he's going to drive so much value. He's more than competent to drive this forward. I don't have to be involved in the day-to-day -day anywhere near where I've had to been or, or chosen to be, not had to be, but chosen to be in my role with Orn. So the first company, I'm not executive chairman. Mike is going to be amazing. Um, everyone will see that sooner than later when they start to hear him talk about how he's well organized he is. The second company being Sombrero, uh, the Sombrero Resources, which is coming out here. Um, I'm going to be the president and CEO of the company. And so this will be my main focus. And, you know, I, I think it's quite a mature opportunity. We are at the end of permitting. We're going to be at the stage where the drill holes do all the talking. So the hard part as a CEO to build these things is getting to where Sombrero is today. And once the drills start turning, Bill, it doesn't matter how excited I am. The drill results going to do all the talking, you know, and, and that's going to be very critical. So what I'm trying to tell you there is the CEO role is going to be very active, but it's going to be less cumbersome than it would have been a year or two ago to bring Sombrero to where it is today. On tier one metals, I am the non-executive chair there. My partner, Sean, will be the CEO right now. That's the plan. Um, we are going to strengthen that team. We will likely bring somebody in with a silver background to join the group on that side. And again, that person with us, with Sean and myself, it'll be driving the same Oren culture forward, Caden culture, Keegan culture, that we have the same backing financially that we have. And it will be, you know, something that is, again, by the time it starts trading, it'll be very mature. It'll have a portfolio and they'll all be drill ready or a sequence of projects that can be drilled through next, the next 12 to 18 months after it comes trading. So I think to answer your question more, more succinctly, it's going to be my front and center is going to be Sombrero. I will work on Fury as much as I need to to get that going, but I think we've lucked out with an incredible executive in Michael Timmons, and I think my input there will be very complimentary. It, it won't be a driving input that's needed. And again, he, he loves major projects. He loves major targets the way I do. He loves th that, that fierce competition to perform. He has that. He's a, he's a really, really driven individual. So I, I feel that one set. So no, I, I'm not going to be diluting myself too much. Um, there's enough hours in the day. I can sleep, you know, six hours a day as I have been. But all of these opportunities, the, the hard, heavy lifting has been done. And when I say that, Bill, I want you to think about that as a shareholder risk perspective. The hard part, getting great community relations in Sombrero, that's been earned. You know, we earned that over two years. Doing the same at Curry Baya, getting these things through the permit phase, that's been worked on, that's been earned. We've, we've set these things up quite well. This is the mature stage of everything we've done. In Canada, I mean, we have an incredible leader coming in and we have incredible assets. And again, it's gonna come down to drill results. So we become three drilling companies next year. And we are actually gonna drill this year in November as Oren, you know, through Fury, which is great. But you know, the, the pathway to the best performing share prices is, is through the drill bit. The culture is that of what, what you've heard me drive through Oren. And then the technical team is is Mike and Dave. They're the main quarterbacks that have assembled all of these and made all the smart technical decisions with all of their peers and colleagues around them. So we're really well, really well set up, and we're really excited. And I think the driving force behind all of this is, you know, the spirit of going after major discoveries and in one of the best bull markets we will see. And I think we definitely have some of the best assets globally to go after. I am an Oren shareholder and I actually increased my Oren position uh, by purchasing in the open market last week. To learn more, go to orenresources.com and get on the email list there on the homepage and you'll be receiving a lot of these announcements and catalysts that Ivan spoke about today. Ivan, as always, I appreciate your leadership of Oren Resources and thank you for this thorough update. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.